What is up, guys? This is Jason over here at Cog Kill Farm, and it is another episode of the Cogcast Podcast. And I'm hope, I am hoping, hoping you had a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. I know we did. We had an, uh, we just had an awesome Christmas, and I'm hoping that uh that you have a great New Year coming up. 2018 was awesome. And I cannot wait to see what 19 has in store for us. And I'm so happy y'all been following us on this journey, either be via the podcast or our YouTube channel or even any of our other social media sites. I post a ton on Instagram. I post a lot on Facebook and Twitter as well. So check us out on those if you don't. And you can keep up with us uh, on a daily basis on the mother, on those other social media sites. So, but anyways, we are happy to be here. And let's just jump into this podcast. Podcast uh, right off the bat, this will be on YouTube. Um, for the people that wanted me to put it on YouTube, I did start a YouTube channel. Just search podcast podcast, and you will find it. Um, I plan on the visually try to make it a little bit better i mean if you're listening to it on the radio or on a podcast app you don't have to worry about this but um i'm basically sitting at a desk at a blank wall with a old flat screen tv here in front of me and i'm facing the wall and the camera's kind of to the side this room this is that this is my studio and it's basically a spare bedroom and it is tiny super tiny and it has a full-size bed in here that, you know, is right here. I'm touching it right now. I got my desk right here. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's super tiny. This is where I do all my editing. This is where I do all my work. This is where I do all the podcast. This is where I do all my bookkeeping. This is my man cave per se. And But it's just my office, my office, my studio. This is where I practice uh, for my for my dance class and the dance recitals every year, this is it. And I don't have much room, and so I just kind of do the best I can. And when I was just um, just recording the podcast and not filming it, it wasn't that big a deal. But I don't know. We're gonna see. I'll work. I'll work on that. But anyways, I got something to tell you guys. We did process our first batch of meat ducks night for last and let me tell you it was an experience you know you read and read and read and you watch videos you watch videos you talk to people and and if you keep up with me you know i've said this several times and i actually did a podcast on it not too long ago but that is, you know, you can get advice from 15 different people and all 15 of them are going to be different. They're going to tell you something different. And some of it may be similar. Some of it may be totally opposite and contradict each other. But each person is right and the other person is wrong if you talk to them. So it's always a contradiction there. And that's why I always say, you do you, you try things, you experiment, no two farms are the same, no two homesteads are the same, so you do you, you experiment, try different things, and come up with what works best for you, your family, your homestead, and your farm. That's my motto. Just because Joel Salton does it this way doesn't mean it's going to work for Jason over here at Cockhill Farm. I can take his principles, I can change them up a little bit, or tweak this and tweak that, so it does work here. So that's something that I stress a lot, and I hope people do get that point. And that's my, that's my idea. And you may say you're totally wrong, and it doesn't need to be done that way. So that is... That's just the way I believe. That's the way I think. So that's what I do here. And so I listened. I took all the advice. We had a duck farm in Colorado that has been helping us out. 
and giving us advice. And the main thing that you read when it comes to duck farming is you got a window. When the ducks are young, they've got three molts early. And what the molting does is, is the old feathers go out and the new feathers come in. And so you want to be there when they're fully formed feathers and there are no hard pin feathers. Now, I've been told that, I've been told that, I've been told that. And you think you know what you're looking for. You think. But if you've never done it before, you're just guessing, honestly. So I was guessing. And in the window that you're looking for to reduce the pin feathers on a duck is, I've heard several stories on this. Um, the duck farm we're talking to in Colorado says around six and a half weeks to seven. You got five days right there. If you get on the internet and read and other farms there that I've read, they say seven to eight weeks. That's totally different. That's totally different. And you think, well, six and a half, seven, that's all. It's not the same. Because from what I read is, you can have no pin feathers one day, the next day be slapped full because you missed the window. And, and so there is a science to this, and it's going to take experience to figure it out. I thought they were ready. And they may have been ready. I don't know. I've never done this before. So we were guessing, well, we knew that what age they were. These guys were about seven weeks and three days-ish, somewhere in there. Some, yeah, seven weeks, three days, seven weeks. Seven weeks, three days, I think that was correct. Um, Mrs. Cockhill keeps up with the dates, but we're fixing to change that up a little bit too, and I'm going to get into that later in the podcast. But, so... We thought they were the right date. I felt, and they were pin feathers, but we have an older batch, and I compared them, and it didn't seem as bad. So I thought, well, this is it. They're ready. And if you don't know, a duck has a down, and then they have regular feathers, and then you have the oil that they put on their feathers to make them waterproof. A duck... The duck's exterior is to reject and protect them from water and the elements. And the way to pluck is, is you got to use hot water. So you got all this going against you. So here's what we did. We, we, I got a Featherman Scalder, which is a, which is a commercial grade Scalder. Um, great equipment if you guys are ever interested in doing your own processing and maybe getting out of the hobby and maybe trying thinking about doing it for a business, definitely check out Featherman. Those guys have excellent uh, customer service and their equipment is top notch, hands down. So their scalder is, is just, just awesome. It really is. It's a stainless steel tub. I forget how many gallons it is. We've had it go fixed to be close to four years now. We're going on four years. No issues. And it's set. It's got a thermostat on it, but it's preset to the optimal temperature when it comes to poultry. So, with ducks, we were told to add, this this duck farm we were talking to in Colorado, he said add a cup of Dawn detergent to 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 the water. And it's big. I don't know how many gallons it is, but it's a lot of water. It takes two hours to heat up on a warm day. So, you add a cup of Dawn dishwashing detergent, and that's going to cut through that oil and get that water to their skin, because that's what you want. You want to get that water to their skin, so it will release the feathers. So, we did that, and he said to do it about every other batch. Now, he claims, this guy does, he claims he doesn't wax, he times it just right, and all the feathers come off. (coughs) So, that is what our plan was. We have been talking to him, 
And so that that's what our plan was. And so we thought we hit that. So we scalded the first one. I scalded. And the way it works is, is you, with the feathering equipment, I got a manual dunker and I got a roto dunker. But the manual dunker is what you use for ducks because you want to get this, you want to agitate all those feathers and get that water to the skin. So that's what I did. Got them off, put them in a plucker. And we're used to doing Cornish cross chickens. I do that to a corner cross to a Cornish cross chicken. When I pull it out of that plucker within 15 seconds, 20 seconds tops, that thing is as smooth as a baby's bottom. No feathers at all. There may be a couple of stragglers here and there on the inside of the wings where the plucker uh, the plucker fingers can't catch. But other than that, they are clean and it's fast, super fast. So that's what we're used to. Ducks are not like this at all. So we put them in the plucker. Now the guy told us, take them out, look at them. If they don't, if their feathers are still in there, scald them again. So that's what I did. But here's the thing about scalding. You have to be careful because the more you scald, you're going to increase the chance of tearing the skin. So I was being careful and all in all, the first one we had, we do, I do three at a time with the with the equipment. And then the, one of them came out pretty darn good. I mean, as good as you can get, I think. The other two, not so much. The one turned out perfect. I mean, it was beautiful. The other two, just lots of pin feathers, just lots of them. Um, and the thing about the pin feather is, it's like an optical illusion. You can see them, but they're just small enough, just small enough that, and what happens is the feather part kind of comes out and you're left with this like a quill, the end of that feather. You know, you take a feather out and the end of it's hard. That's kind of what you're seeing. So you got these little things sticking up and they're just small enough where you can't grab them. If you could get a grip on them, they will come out. But if you can't, they just sit there. And I tried everything. I even had a, uh, I had a hog scraper. I was just experimenting. I tried scraping, you know, with the hog scraper. It didn't do anything. I tried with a knife. It didn't do anything. And I'm thinking, you know, as many years, you know, people have been doing ducks. Ever, you know, that's been tried a gazillion times and it doesn't work. So, because if it did work, somebody would have a blog out there. Saying, this is how you pluck ducks. You know, get a hog scraper. So, none of it worked. Um, I just worked with it, worked with it, worked with it. I mean, literally, if you had a pair of needle nose pliers, you could get them out easy. They will come out if you can get a grip on them. But if you can't get a grip on them, they're not going to come out. And like I said, they're too short for you to get your hands on. They just fold over. And so... It was a little discouraging. Um, for one, it was, I had got home from work. So it was about six o'clock. It was pitch black dark when we started. And we had, we knew it was going to take us longer. It was only, actually it was 28 ducks. So, you know, we're thinking we can, we've got chickens down where it takes with no help. Just me and Mrs. Cockhill, we average right at, I mean, seriously. And when I'm, when I'm saying, I'm, I'm talking about plucked, uh, cleaned, gutted, bagged, weighed, and on ice, two minutes of chicken. And so when I got help, it's quicker than that. And uh, I got a good friend that helps me now. And... So it becomes quicker than that. It really, really does. And so, I mean, usually I mean, it is. It's, it's usually two minutes of chicken for me and her. And when I got help, it drops a pretty good bit. I mean, it drops it. It may even drop at thirty seconds, where we're a minute and a half. And you think, well, half half a minute's not that much. Thirty seconds, but when you're doing a hundred chickens, that's fifty minutes. That saves an hour. So you can see, you know, how that works. So we were kind of thinking, you know, I'm thinking 30 ducks, two hours. We can do 50 chickens 
in two hours. We could probably do 30 ducks in two, two and a half hours. It took us way longer than that. Um, I did get a little bit better with it. And what I would do is, is I would only do two. And as soon as I got them out, I would pull the breast feathers out with my hands. And it worked better than the plucker I was thinking. But looking back, it may not have. I don't know. Um, so what did I learn? Well, this is what I learned. And that is, I got to do something different. Um, the, the duck farm in Colorado doesn't use wax and he doesn't like using wax. Um, I got on the internet today and I just searched and searched and searched and searched. And honestly, guys, there is absolutely hardly anything out there. There really is nothing out there. Nothing showing you what a pin feather is supposed to look like, you know, versus nothing. Oh, there's nothing out there showing you a, a, a breast of a duck, a live duck of what you're looking for versus what you're not looking for. That would help me out tremendously. And if I can figure this out, I'm going to make this information available because I'm struggling, but I will figure it out. So there's just nothing out there. No information out there about, you know, I've heard, I hear people say, hit it, hit it, hit it on these days. And I haven't found anybody besides this duck farmer talking to in Colorado that they did doesn't use wax. They, they claim that theirs come clean and they don't use wax. And it's all about when you hit the date. I've seen a couple of YouTube videos that did it when you're supposed to do it in the window and they still used wax. Um, that's what I'm leaning towards now. I think the next batch, we're going to use the wax. I got to try something. Um, you know, my first thinking was, well, you know, this farm is not using the wax. And he says, you know, it takes too much time, blah, blah, blah. But then I was thinking, but, you know, on the other hand, he's also saying, if you don't get it on the first call, it's probably going to take you a couple of more scalds. Well, by the time I did those couple of more scalds and plucks, I could have waxed it by then and pulled it off. So I'm leaning towards doing the wax. Um, I would love feedback on this. So if any of you out there are duck farmers and do this, you know, on a regular basis and have had success with it, please let me know what you're doing. Um, I would love to know. Uh, leave me a comment on the podcast if you can or if you're watching on YouTube or heck, shoot me an email, cockhillfarms at gmail.com. Um, it's down there in the descriptions, either on the YouTube channel or on my podcast site or my website. You can go to my website thecockhillform.com and you can send me a message that way but I would love to know what other people are doing and is it working because see if if, the, if I was doing this just for myself if this if these ducks were for my family it would not bother me at all none but these ducks are going to a high-end restaurant and so that's a different animal so I I, I, I'm, I'm going to figure it out. I know that hands down, I will figure this out. And it's, it's just different than chickens. So that, that's what I know. And I've accepted. And I, you know, I had that idea coming in, but you don't know until you jump in and just do it. So that, that's where I am right now on the ducks. We're fixing to order some more. And, we're going to keep up a better schedule. And that's what I was getting back to earlier when I said that Mrs. Cockill does keep up with all the dates. And so it's, um, <clears throat> we, 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 we get confused sometimes and I get confused because I'm going to be honest with you. <clears throat> I'm absolutely horrible at dates. There's two things that I'm terrible and just doesn't register in my mind and doesn't click, and it's, I'm just horrible. I mean, I, I, I accept it. Um, she accepts it, and uh, is dates are one, and I mean dates, I mean dates. I mean, 
if Christmas wasn't such a big deal, I would totally forget Christmas. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't ring a bell. Um, I have to try to come up with an association with something that try to remember somebody's date. Like for instance, Mrs. Coghill's birthday. I associate it with Martin Luther King's birthday. Um, so they're real close to each other. So that's how I remember which day is her birthday. And it's so it, um, I'm just terrible at dates. I'm just awful. I cannot remember. They just doesn't register. And there's some reason that I've read about it, but it, I'm not the only person in the world like that. It's just dates do not register in my mind at all. And the other one is names. I cannot remember people's names. I just absolutely, it just doesn't click with me. So n- dates and names are hard for me to keep up with. So that's why I came up with the chalkboard in the rabbit house. Um, and that working for me because I see it every time I come in there. I can look up, see it. Boom, 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 boom. But if I had to try to remember that, you know, oh, I bought that six weeks ago, it it, 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 does, it won't work. So the chalkboard is working well. So now what I did was is I ordered me a big calendar. And I'm going to keep it here in my, my studio office area. And I'm going to either hang it up on the door, somewhere, maybe right here, somewhere where I see it a lot. I'm going to see it three, four, five, ten times a day. I can look at it. I can see what's going on. And I won't have to depend on asking her or try to remember asking her. And that way me and her both can keep up with it. And because it becomes, you know, when we were just doing chickens, it was fine. But now we've added rabbits. And then the thing with rabbits is, is it's not just processing date. It's that we're breeding our own rabbits. So you got a breed date. You got a nesting box date. You got the date to when to take the nesting box out. You, um, you got to write down the date when the babies were born. You know, how old are the babies? When do you take the babies from the mama? When do you put the babies out on? There's a lot going on with rabbits when it comes to dates. Then you got the Cornishes that they were running. And we got them in a stagger rotation. So one a batch is six weeks old, we're ordering another batch to come in, and that way that we always have a four-week, no, a six-week turnaround. So, you know, there's dates there because they need to be processed on week number eight, and now we've added ducks to the mix. So now we got ducks, and ducks are very important because you want to hit that seven-week window. So we got those to the mix and not to mention, you know, stuff like when did you worm the goats? When did we worm the farm dogs? When did we um, give the goats their copper? When did we give the goats their B12? When did we give peaches a wormer? So there's several things there, too, that all revolve around dates. So I'm going to try to help out with dates because it's just gotten so big now. Um. You know, last year it was just Cornishes and it wasn't that big, but now, but now we're, we're just, we just, we're just growing and I'm just going to help her out with the dates and that's why I'm buying me a calendar and that way I can help keep up with it and make this place more efficient. And that's just part of learning as you go because you're not going to know everything and you're going to make mistakes. Absolutely. Hands down. And if you're scared of making a mistake, and don't do something because of that. That's crazy. You're just going to have to realize you are not perfect. You're going to screw up. You're going to make mistakes. And But that's just part of life regardless. So don't worry about making mistakes because I can promise you everybody has made mistakes and lots of them. Uh, but... I did want to give you an update on the meat ducks, how that's going, where it happened on the process day, and yeah, and I love some feedback on them. But uh, guys, I hope y'all have a great 2019. I hope you have a safe and wonderful New Year's. We'll catch y'all on the next one. Y'all be good.